Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, we're going to learn how to use set comprehensions in Python. As usual, I'll put my Jupyter Notebook on my GitHub site, and I'll put the link down below so you can download and run the code yourself. So set comprehensions are basically very similar to Python list comprehensions, which if you haven't watched my list comprehensions video, I recommend you watch that as well. It's very useful. Uh, it'll teach you a lot about how to create list comprehensions, what a powerful tool that is in Python to create new lists with a single line of code. It's pretty awesome. The general syntax works like this. So you have an expression, and then you have for item in some iterable if condition is met. Some of these can be left out. Okay, so for example, the condition or an expression can just be x or whatever. But you'll see as we work through these examples. Um, so a simple comprehension using the range function, we want a set of integers i for i in range 10. So the expression here is simply i, right? We're just going to take i. For i in range 10. Okay, what does for i in range 10 return? Well, let's see. That returns an iterable or a sequence of integers from 0 to 9, doesn't it? And it's going to put those into a set called ints. And then we're going to print out ints. So this is going to create a new set from 0 to 9 for us. Let's run this and see how that works. We get a set from 0 to 9. Now, mind you, sets in Python have no duplicates. Duplicates are automatically removed. In this case, that didn't matter. And they're also um, not in order, not necessarily sequenced, right? So here, these happen to be in nice uh, numerical order, but they're not always going to come out like that. That's just the nature of sets in Python. So the next example here we have is uh, comprehension using range with condition filter. So you said over here that we can add an if condition if we want. And you saw in the first example, we didn't have an if condition. We just ended it after the iterable there, right? The range function. In this one, we're using basically the same thing, except we're calling this only evens. Evens equals i for i in range 10. So for i in range 10 is going to count 0 through 9. And if i mod 2 is 0, in other words, if the number is even, then it's going to add i to the set. So let's run this, see what happens. It prints 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. And that's just basically i mod 2 equals 0. It has to pass this. This is a Boolean return here. This, this test, this condition has to be a Boolean return value, either positive or, or negative, true or false. And then we just add i. So that is with a simple conditional filter. Now let's apply a math function to values in a range. So here we're just going to square, okay, and we'll call this resulting set squares i times i for i in range 10. So for each of the integers 0 through 9, we're going to add that integer squared to our set. Let's run this and see how it works. Pretty straightforward, and like I said, these are not necessarily in sequence, are they? Kind of mixed up order. Uh, but yeah, we can see all of the squared integers of 0 through 9, all the way up to 81, right? That's 9 squared, in our set. So we'll note that Python does eliminate duplicates. So look, here we have i squared for i in range negative 5, to 5. What's that going to count? Let's see. It's actually going to give us return return back um, from negative 5 all the way up to 4. So negative 4 and positive 4 both equal 16, but it's not going to add 16 twice, is it? Only add 16 once. Negative 3 and positive 3 squared are both 9, positive 9, but it only adds 9 one time. So you can see how there are some duplicates, and Python knows to eliminate those because this is a set. So this is the beauty of set comprehensions here. We don't get duplicate values in the set. We only get one of each item. Set comprehension on a list. So here we have a list, again, with a lot of duplicates. This is called primes. And then primes squared, we're going to square those values and add them in. Let's run this. And we get what you would expect. We get these squared primes 
without duplicates. So two is in here, it looks like three times, and we only get one four down here in our set. So this is again pretty straightforward, very simple statement. P times P for P in primes. In other words, for each item or each integer in primes, we're going to add P squared to the set. Okay, uh, more complex expressions. Uh, you can actually, our statement can be pretty much anything. The expression that we've done so far is, okay, we've gotten up to P squared. You can just add the item itself or P squared. Here we're adding a, a whole quadratic equation as our statement or expression, right? This whole thing, and we're putting it inside of parentheses. So I put it in parentheses just to kind of separate it out so it's clear. This is our expression. So 4x in primes, in other words, we're going to iterate through this same list of primes, again with a lot of duplicate values in there. We're going to apply this quadratic equation to it, 2x squared plus 5x plus 10. Uh, and then we're going to print out the transformed set. So let me run this. You see what we get is this function applied to each one of those uh, primes values. And again, with the duplicates weeded out. So your transformation here, this function or this expression can be fairly complex. You can put whatever you want in there almost. And we can also flatten a multi-dimensional list. This is pretty handy sometimes when you have a multi, this is a two-dimensional list, right? We have a couple of uh, two-item lists inside of a larger list, and we want to flatten this. We're also going to remove the duplicates. In case the syntax is a little confusing, I think this will explain it a little better. We're adding leaf to the list for branch and tree for leaf in branch. That's how the for in works, okay? Let's run this. And so look, we picked out the 1, the 2, and the 3, and then the 76 and 98. So there's really only five unique integers in all of these, uh, all of these lists. But it gave us back a flat set. And this is only for a two-dimensional list where B is the branch, nums is the tree, right? And A is the leaf, or the item, the lowest item that we want to add. B would be a two item list or sub list. Okay, and then we pr print the flattened set, which has uh, five items in it. We can also eliminate the duplicates from a list. In this example, we're also going to fix the case. Uh, in this case, we have Salil, um, Albert, Ella, George, Salil, George, Ella. So we have a lot of duplicates here in, with different case. So we can easily fix the case in Python using in.capitalize, which is capitalize the, the first letter. So for in and names, this is the variable that we're going to get as we iterate through this list of names. And then do we add in? No, we add in dot capitalize. What in dot capitalize do, does is it changes it to um, first letter is going to be uppercase, the rest of them are lowercase. So watch when we run this, what we get back is all the unique names with the first letter capitalized in a set. So the set is what weeded out duplicates. The in dot capitalize basically made this Albert the same as this Albert. Right? So it fixed the case on all of them to make, make it the same. So that is nice for eliminating duplicates from a list and also fixing case. It's also easy to convert this back to a list if you should want to change this back to a list, let's say of four items, you just call list on that resulting set. So let's see, we can get the car make Let's say we have make and model, we have Toyota Prius, Chevy Bolt, Toyota, Tesla Model 3, Tesla Model Y. Um, what happens when we run this? How does this work? Well, for C in cars, you see, for C in cars, in other words, C is this, right? We're iterating through cars. Each time through this for loop, we're going to get Toyota Prius, Chevy Bolt, 
test the model three. And then what are we going to add to the set? Well, we're, what we're adding is C dot split and then the zeroth item. So split, you may know, splits at the blank spaces. So it's going to split this into a two item list. The first item is Toyota, the second item is Prius. And we take the zeroth item, which is Toyota. So in other words, we're basically taking the first word of this string that's looking for the first blank space and giving us everything before the blank space. So here we get Toyota, Tesla, and Chevy. And we saw that there are two, two Teslas and it uh, eliminated the duplicates. So this is kind of cool that you can just pick out the first word and eliminate the dupes with a single line of code with the set comprehension here. In our last example here, we're going to get the initials from a list of names. So we have first name and last name. Oh, look, Tony only has a first name. OK, so Tony's first name only complicates things. But let me run this. So what we get back is CB for Clint Barton, uh, NF for Nick Fury, and HP for Hank Pym. We didn't get anything for Tony. So let me show you how this works. For in in names is our for loop, right? for in and name. So each time it goes through the for loop, it's grabbing one item from this list, which is a string. And then it's going to run this filter. If length of in dot split is equal to two. In other words, we split at the blank spaces. If the resulting list after this split is exactly two, then we'll add in dot split zero zero plus in dot split one zero. In other words, the first letter of each of the first two words. So C and B, um, N and F, and H and P. So in Tony's case, he didn't pass this if check, the condition. He didn't pass this condition because he doesn't have two words. But the other three all have two words. So what we got was the zeroth word and the zeroth letter plus the one-th word in the zeroth letter, right? Which is basically the first letter of the first word and first letter of the second word combined together. And that is our resulting set of initials. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.